Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quentin here and welcome to tutorial number 33. And in this tutorial, I'm going to speak to you guys about form validation using checkboxes. So checkboxes work very similar to radio buttons and if you guys watched the previous video and then went ahead and watched this video, you're probably going to notice quite a few similarities between the code in this video and the code in the previous video. Okay, so to get started, let's actually put some checkboxes onto our web page. Now, the way I'm going to do this, and uh, this is kind of just the practical example of where you would use a checkbox in uh, on a website in the real world. Uh, let's say we were we had an online store and we were selling. Um, different items but they could be put under categories like electronics, tools, sports, etc. Okay, We'd give the user the option to tick like sports or electronics as like something that was an interest to them and we could send them a mail based on just what they're interested in hearing about instead of sending them a mail on like everything that we sell. Okay, So let's go ahead and just add in a paragraph over here. And I'm just going to say, uh, please select a category that you're interested in, or some categories. OK. And then we'll go ahead and give them some categories that they can choose from. So, like I said, uh, one could be sports, another one could be electronics, and one could be tools or something. Okay, and now what I want to do is we need to actually add in our checkbox. So, that would be an input element with a type of uh, checkbox. And then we're also going to give it a name a value and an ID. Now these are pretty much all the same attributes that we worked with when working with radio buttons and we actually do uh, we actually use all these same attributes for the same reason that we used in the previous video. So name would obviously go ahead and put them all in a group and also it would be a way to send uh, that value to the server with a name. Okay. So let's go ahead and give it a name of interests and a value of uh, sports and then an ID of sports as well. Okay. Then uh, I actually just want to add in a break tag at the end of this just for uh, readability or just to make it neat. Okay. And now I'm just going to copy this and paste it a few times. Now for electronics, our value will be electronics and our ID will be electronics. Tools, same thing. Uh, we'll just go ahead and copy and paste those. And now we can go ahead and save this. And if we run this in Firefox to take a look at what this looks like, you can see we've got our question at the top here and we've got some checkboxes. Now here's the main difference between a checkbox and a radio button. A checkbox, when they were all grouped uh, with the same name, then we could only select one radio button. But a checkbox, when we tick it, we can tick all of the checkboxes on the page or we can just tick two or one or whatever like we can check as many as we want but radio buttons you could only check one okay no matter how many were there were no matter how many of them there were you could only check one that was kind of a tongue twister okay so let's go ahead now and use JavaScript to determine whether a checkbox has been checked or not Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and use this function over here, seeing as it's already here in my code from the previous tutorial. Function is checked, and we'll go ahead and check 
if uh, something is checked. So we'll make three variables. I'm going to call one sports. And I'm going to set that equal to uh, this element. So we're going to go ahead and say document dot get element by ID. And uh, obviously we'll grab this ID over here, which is sports. And I don't want to work with the entire input element. I just want to know has this input element been checked or not checked? Okay, so I can work with uh, this property called checked and that'll return a value of true if it's checked and false if it's not checked. Okay, so uh, sports will be true if uh, this element was checked and sports would be false if this element was not checked. Okay, now let's go ahead and we'll make a second variable and that one will be for electronics I don't know if I spelled them the same okay I did and uh, obviously that'll be equal to this line over here but instead it would be electronics oops sorry I want to push control C not control V Okay, and I think I'll just copy this entire line again, paste that, and uh, we'll go say tools and tools. Okay, so now we've got three variables, and uh, they'll return whether our checkbox has been checked or not checked. So let's go ahead and create an if statement to find out if they haven't been checked. Okay, now if all three of these checkboxes are not ticked, like they are not ticked right now, they will all return false. So our variables will all be false. So let's go ahead and check if all of them are false. If uh, sports is equal to false and if electronics is equal to uh, whoops, false and tools equal to false okay so if everything is false then let's go ahead and just tell the user hey you need to at least select something I mean we don't want to let you through to our submitted page if you didn't even give us any data to submit okay so uh, let's go ahead and just alert out please check a category and we'll also return false just so that the user can't go through to the submitted page unless they actually tick something and then we can go ahead and say else uh, and this else statement will only run if at least one of these boxes has been ticked okay so let's go ahead and just say return true And uh, we'll obviously just use leave it up to the server to decide or to store um, these values. But we'll have to learn a server-side programming language for that. So don't worry about that just yet. But uh, let's go ahead and refresh this in Firefox now. And now, as you can see, when I click Submit, I've got this alert box that pops up and says, Hey, please check a category. Okay, you can't not have something checked because that's like you know we don't want to have you submit no data at all to our page you go ahead and click OK and you stay right here you don't go anywhere and then when you go ahead and click uh, or tick sports and tools and then you click submit then you go through to the submitted page over here and we've got thank you for submitting your data and if we check in the top of the URL okay I've got interests um, is equal to sports and interest is equal to tools so now we know the user has selected sports and tools but we'd have to actually use like some server-side programming languages to actually take these values and store them in a database or something like that you know 
trying uh, would have to have a server side program and to do something useful but uh, that's all I have for you guys in this video and thank you for watching please don't forget to subscribe and please feel free to like and comment below on the video and I will see you guys in the next one so thanks for watching